What would you do if you witnessed a fight about to break out among your classmates? Today, we delve into the courageous act of a young boy who stepped in to prevent violence in the most unexpected way. This isn't just a story of bravery. It's a testament to the power of faith and moral courage. The Miracles and Prophecies of St. John Bosco, a project of America Needs Pharma. I'm your host, Adrian Fonseca. Subscribe for new episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Howdy, and welcome to the Miracles and Prophecies of St. John Bosco. My name is Adrian Fonseca. Today, we're diving into the first part of an inspiring two-part episode about St. John Bosco and his beloved boys. In this episode, we'll explore a remarkable story of courage and faith. Reflect on this during the video. How far would you go to prevent harm to others, even at risk of yourself? Before we get into the story, I want to remind you about an opportunity to support our mission. By becoming a monthly promoter, you can help us to continue sharing these inspirational stories. Plus, we will give you some awesome gifts in return. Check the link in the description box down below or in the comment section for more details. Boys of St. John Bosco's Oratory were now well known and greatly respected in Turin, where they frequented the private junior and senior high schools, conducted by Professor Joseph Bonzanino and Father Matthew Pico. They dressed plainly, as benefited their humble condition, but they were so neat and well-mannered that their wealthy and aristocratic classmates enjoyed associating with them. The friendships they formed fostered emulation and good conduct. The two professors often thanked God for the presence of the oratory boys, especially since one of them was credited with preventing a serious fight. Dominic Savio was studying second-year Latin under Professor Bonzanino, when two of his classmates unwittingly gave him a chance to show how much he loved God and to what extent he would go to prevent sin. One day an argument broke out between them, starting with unpleasant remarks about each other's family and ending with foul insults. At this point, they decided to settle matters with a stone fight. As soon as Dominic learned of it, he was deeply grieved and he decided to intervene, even though he wasn't sure how he could stop them since both were older and stronger than him, he tried to talk them out of it, reminding them that revenge is against both common sense and God's law. Then he wrote a note to each of them, threatening to inform their teachers and their parents of the proposed fight. However, all of his efforts were useless. They had so angered each other that nothing would stop them. At this point, Dominic was inspired to an act which could be rightly termed heroic. Waiting for the boys after school, he told them, If you still insist on this senseless fight of yours, will you promise me just one thing? All right, as long as you don't try to stop the fight. He's a good-for-nothing bum, shouted one boy, and the other spat back. I won't be satisfied until I've split his skull. Dominic shuddered at the violence of the threats, but to ward off greater evil, he steeled himself and said, What I ask won't stop the fight. Well, what is it? I'll tell you only when we get there. You're just trying to trick us, one of the boys retorted. No, I'm not. I'll be with you all the time. Then you're going to call somebody, another accused. I should, but I won't. Let's go. But remember, you must keep your word. After that exchange, the boy set out for the Citadel Meadows, near Porta Susa, where St. Barbara's church now stands. When they arrived, young Savio did something that completely caught the other two off guard. He waited until they had paced off their positions, each armed with stones. Then he spoke. Before you start, you must keep your promise. Taking a small crucifix which he would wear around his neck, he held it up in his hand. You must first look at this crucifix, he continued. And then, you must throw the first stone at me and say, Jesus was innocent and died forgiving his murderers. But I, a sinner, am going to offend him by bloody revenge. He strode up to the angrier boy, knelt before him and cried, You start. Throw the first stone at me. Aim at my head. Completely stunned, the boy began to tremble. No, he protested. Never. I have no grudge against you. I will even defend you if anyone tries to hit you. Dominic then ran over to the other boy. He too was taken aback and shouted, I'll never hurt you. Never. 
Dominic stood up and in tones vibrant with emotion exclaimed, You are both ready to face danger to save me? And nobody? Yet to save your own souls for which Christ died, you aren't even willing to overlook a stupid remark made at school? Don't you realize that you could lose your soul by committing this sin? He stood there, silent, with his crucifix still in hand, his eyes welling with tears. The two boys were stunned by his courageous and generous stand. It is recorded that after the event, one of them admitted, At that moment, I was deeply moved. A cold shiver ran through me and I hated myself for having forced a good friend like Dominic to go to such lengths to keep us from that evil deed. A few days later, the two classmates once again on friendly terms made their peace with God by going to confession. Many of Dominic Savio's virtues are said to have been drawn from the example of his saintly mentor, Don Bosco. Through the oratory's resources were often meager, no one ever went hungry. Notwithstanding the high cost of even inferior bread, Don Bosco would never turn a boy away, but he actually increased their number. For this reason, Divine Providence never abandoned him, and he placed his whole trust in Divine Providence with so much confidence, love, and gratitude that one can say he spent his whole life giving thanks to the Lord. Even the smallest of daily occurrences found him extolling God's goodness. For example, on one summer day, while in town with Father Michael Rua, he paused in front of a fruit stand, then pointing to its fine assortment, he remarked, How good the Lord is to give us such abundance and variety. He gratefully expressed the same thoughts on countless other occasions. What made his faith even more meritorious was the fact that he was never the least bit impatient when help was slow in coming, or even when he found hopes for a project particularly dear to his heart were not fulfilled. One such instance incurred when he realized that he would have to postpone his long cherished plan for a print shop and resign himself to the fact that he could not buy back the piece of land that he had sold for just this purpose. Unperturbed by his own misfortunes, St. John Bosco sent the following reply to Father Charles Gillardi, who was seeking his help to resell the same field to which our saint had hoped to fulfill his dreams. Turin, August 15th, 1855. Dear Father Charles, I am grateful for your kind letter, informing me officially that Father John Baptist Pagani is your new superior general. Praise be to God. I firmly believe that this is God's will. Please give your superior my best regards. Regarding the lot you would like to sell, this is the way matters now stand. True, this land is valuable because of its proximity to the projected railroad station in the Valdoco area, but the many encouraging inquiries of last spring have somehow given way to some uncertainty. No one at this time is in the mood to build or buy. I would suggest that we wait until the next spring. In the meantime, if a good offer comes up, we might accept it, but we must be careful not to act hastily. In any event, at the moment I am not in a position to buy. My mother and the clerics fondly remember you and reciprocate your regards. Keep us all in your prayers. Your friend, Father John Bosco. The serenity clearly evident in the above letter stemmed from Don Bosco's trust in our Blessed Mother and from his joy at the excellent conduct of his oratory boys. This story showcases the profound impact of faith and moral courage in everyday life. Dominic Savio's bravery prevented a grave sin and set an example for us all. If this story moved you, consider supporting our mission by becoming a monthly promoter of St. John Bosco. Your support helps us to share more inspiring stories and spread the message of St. John Bosco's miracles and prophecies. As a token of our appreciation, you'll receive various gifts, such as mass remembrances and pictures of St. John Bosco and Mary, Help of Christians. Personally, the image of Mary, Help of Christians has brought me so much solace in my daily life. So click the link in the comment section down below and in the description box to learn more. In today's story, Dominic Savio's courageous intervention prevented violence and reminded us of the power of faith and moral courage. It's a powerful lesson on the importance of standing up for what's right, even when it's difficult. Now, what did you think about today's episode? What stood out to you the most? Leave a comment in the comment section down below because I would love to know what you think. Thank you for joining me today, St. John Bosco. Pray for us.
May God bless you and Mary Immaculate keep you under her mantle. God love you.